Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn day into night in Lightroom. Before we get started with this day for night effect in Lightroom, let's have a look and see what it is that we're going to try and achieve. This is the final look of the image and this is the original image. This was shot in daytime and this is what the image might look like if it were lit for a nighttime scene. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Lightroom and it's not as difficult as it looks. This is the original image that I'm using. First thing I'm going to do is this was opened in a previous version of Lightroom. So I'm just going to update it to the current process version. And I do that by alt clicking on that little icon there. That resets all the basic panel adjustments, just makes life a little bit easier because these are the tools I'm more familiar with. Now the sky in this image is going to be a really big problem because it's really quite light. So I decided to crop this image to around 1 to 1. So I'm just going to start with a 1 to 1 ratio. And let's just drag that to position. And I think it could actually be a little bit more. So let's take it just a little bit up here. But I am going to kill this lightness before I go too much further. So I'm going to click Done. Now the radial tool, uh, the radial filter is a really good idea to kill this lightness. I'm just going to drag to create a radial adjustment here. You can see that it's going on the outside of the shape rather than the inside. So I'm just going to invert this mask and I'm going to size it up and just run it off the top of the image because it doesn't have to be all over the image. And I'm just going to back off the exposure here and just darken this. Now, I can adjust that again in a minute when I get the rest of the image done. But you'll see that you'll be able to kill this sky pretty easily. So let's just click Done for now and let's go and fix the rest of the image. The first thing I'm going to do is walk the exposure way down because I want to really darken up the image. And I want to pick a white and a black point. So I'm going to Alt drag on the white point slider and just make sure that I have a white point there, which I do. I don't want it to be in the sky, but I don't mind wherever else it is. And I'm going to Alt drag on the blacks to make sure I've got a black point in the image as well. Okay, to give the image a sort of nighttime look, I'm going to bring the temperature towards the blues. And that blue light is fairly typical of nighttime, but we're going to kill that in a minute in places by adding in some yellow. So I'm just going to adjust for that a little bit by bringing the exposure down a bit further. Let's go back to the radial filter tool. I'm not really happy with what's happening up here at all. So I'm going to bring the radial filter in. I'm going to again bring down the exposure and drop the contrast up here entirely. Just do anything I can to try and darken this area of the image. Let's just make it a little bit deeper. I don't think you're going to see it when we've got the rest of the effect in place. But if necessary, we can always crop the sky out again. Now I'm going to look now at lighting the image. And there are a few gifts in this image. There are about three light sources. So there are three lamps here that we can use, as well as some sort of potential lighting here. And of course, we don't know what's going on around the corner here. And I'm going to assume that there's sort of some bar or something here throwing quite a bit of light into the image. Now most of the lighting is going to be done using the adjustment brush. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush and let's start in the easy place. So let's start up here. I'm going to press Z or Z for zoom. And I'm just going to hold the space bar as I move this light into position so I can see it. Now it's going to click to pin down my adjustment brush and let's start brushing over this light here. Now I'm going to do my lights in two or three runs because first up what I want to do is light the middle of it. So I'm going to increase the temperature because I want it to be yellow and I'm going to increase the exposure a bit. You can see I've only got a very low flow here so not operating on a high flow. I'm just going to paint in here and paint in down this edge here. I've got my mask turned off but you might want your mask turned on. So once I've done that, I'm just going to click Done. And that's going to be the initial light. Now I'm going to go back and get it again, this time increasing the brush quite a bit. Really good feather, low flow. And now let's go and pick up the places where this light would be casting some light onto the building behind it. You can move the image around. 
Now the light is going to be more intense closer in to the light source and it's going to disappear or peter out really quite quickly. So again, I'm going to just paint that. I'm going to make sure it's casting a yellow light. Now it's going to cast a shadow here, but it's going to light in these areas. So I'm just going to zoom out and just see how realistic or not that is. Well, I think it's a little bit too much right now, so I'm just going to back off the exposure. But once we light the rest of the image, this is going to look a whole lot more natural. So I'm just going to bring that in there a little bit. So let's call that good for that particular light there. Let's go to this light here and we're going to do the same thing. Now if you can't get close enough into the image, open up this side panel here. I'm just going to close down my history and you can go to 2 to 1. So that allows you to get even close or you can even go to 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 to get close into small elements that are going to be your light sources. So again, I've got my adjustment brush here. I'm going to pin it down and just brush over this light. Let's increase the tint here or the temperature by making it a lot more yellow and let's increase the flow so we can really get some light into this lamp here. And again, working on the basis that you're going to light this two or three times, you're going to light it first of all, you're going to do the very close in light. I'm just trying to erase this and I've not got my eraser here. Okay, went a bit too far. So first time you're going to light the lamp and then you're going to add some additional light behind the lamp and in the areas where the lamp would be casting light on things around it. I'll generally do that with a lower flow and perhaps even a larger softer brush. So and it's going to be more intense closer to the lamp and it's going to disappear as you get further out. So let's just click done on that and you can see that we're getting an effect that we really quite like in there. Although I think perhaps I've got a little bit too much light on this fabric here. So I'm going to click the adjustment brush, pick up the pin that affects that area and then just erase off it. So I've just got the eraser here. It's going to do a little bit of a raising there. So now let's have a look at the other light. There's a light in here that we can do the same thing with. I'm going to need to make my brush much smaller as I go, of course. And these are all going to be yellow lights because that's a typical globe that would be in use here. So having done that, let's now go and do another adjustment brush. Again, slightly bigger size this time because we want to pick up this wall which is going to get some light from this particular lamp. You're going to need to set in its final position. So I always click done and have a look and see if that's too much or too little. I'm thinking that there's a little bit too much at the very top of this lamp here. So I'm just going to click on it. Let's go to the eraser and let's just take the top off that lamp there. I think that's better. Now let's have a look at the potential to light this area in here. So again, I'm going to go for the adjustment brush and I'm just going to start painting in here. Let's increase the lightness and let's go for a higher exposure. I've got a low flow, which is why it's being painted on at a very slow rate, but that's fine. So what I generally do is to paint it on fairly heavily and then come in and start removing it. So I think some of this light here may spill over to here. So I'm just going to light that a little bit too as a sort of spillover. Now let's zoom in here and let's start removing it from where we think we may not have it so intense. I'm going to bring down my flow, increase my feather so that when I'm removing it, I'm only just gently removing it. I don't want to light the back of these bikes too much, so I'm just going to remove that there. And the other thing I'm conscious of is that if this light were spilling out in this direction, then this area here is going to be in shadow, the area in front of the bike. So let's just build in a few shadows here that the bikes themselves will be casting on the wall. And let's 
try and bring down some of the, the light on these bikes. So let's just zoom out and see what we've got. We've got a fairly realistic looking light happening here. Now in the version I showed you earlier, I had some light spilling out here from a sort of indeterminate source. So again, I'm going to go for the adjustment brush and I'm just going to bring some light in here. Now I'm sort of painting in the direction that I'm thinking that the light is going to be picked up on this sort of pavement. And again, going for adding yellow just by adjusting the temperature here, just adding a little bit of yellow light. Now if I reduce clarity, it's going to be a little bit softer. So that might be something that you look at doing is just softening it off with a little bit of clarity. And anywhere that the sunlight had previously picked this up, I might be looking at painting in some yellow light or I might be looking at actually removing it completely. So let's go to get the adjustment brush. Let's just paint over this and drop the exposure way back down so I can actually paint out areas where I don't want to be seeing any light that might have been sort of left over from the sunlight image. So again, I'm going to paint that out there. I'm also a bit concerned with what's happening here with the chairs because they're going to be in quite a bit of shadow. I'm going to bring some light into the table in a minute, but I'm going to paint out those chairs. And this gentleman, the top of his head can be painted out. And I'm also going to just reduce the flow a little bit and just back off the light on these cars here too. And on the front of the bike here. I'm going to increase the flow at this point and just mask that out entirely. So you get a choice here of areas that you want to lighten, but you can also darken areas by just painting over them. And if they're not going to be lit by whatever it is that light that you're using, then you will need to paint them out. So with this bike, I'm thinking that perhaps some of the areas that were lighter should really be yellow because they're going to be picking up some light from this overhead light source. And so let's just go in here and pick these up. But let's make sure that this time it's a yellow light. And I'm just going to bring the exposure way back down. And let's zoom out. And you can see that the bike, the, the light that's catching is now a sort of more yellow light. I could continue at this point and I will continue to add little bits of light into areas where I think that there might be some light being caught. Again, I'm going to dial down the exposure a lot, but I'm just going to try and bring in a little bit of yellow light where it might be appropriate. Up here, we can light this set of windows. This is really a gift to us again in this image in that there's some lighter areas here. So I'm going to go to the adjustment brush and this time I'm going to turn Auto Mask on because that's really going to help me here. I'm going to enlarge my brush, pin it down and just go and pick up these areas where it could be that we have some light from inside the building spilling onto this window frame and out onto the edge of the windows. So I'm just picking up these areas. And the auto mask is just making this so easy to do. Okay, so we've got these sorts of areas now picked up. So now let's go and make it a really yellow light that's coming through here. And again, if you haven't quite got it, then you can go back in and pick up these areas. Use the eraser if you need to, if you've gone over the edge a bit too much. You can always turn on the mask overlay to see how good a selection you've made come into this area here probably a little bit too much. And of course we've overlit this, so I'm just going to bring down the exposure because we need it to be a more subtle light. And let's just click Done and let's go and check to make sure again that it looks realistic. Now with this you might assume that along the edge of the window is perhaps a slightly more intense light effect. So let's go and grab this again. I'm going to pick up my pin 
I'm going to darken this down a little bit and I'm going to come in with another pin here and just pick up these areas here where I might expect there to be perhaps a little bit of extra light because it might be coming out from underneath a blind, for example. So let's go and see what this effect is. Well, it's a little bit too intense, but we can go and pick it up and just back it off a little bit. And again, just making sure that it's a yellow light coming through here. So let's click Done. Now I'm thinking that these linens here that are hanging out of the window probably aren't going to be looking blue. They need to be more yellow. So I'm going to pick them up. I'm going to not do anything with the exposure, but I am going to readjust their temperature. And I might actually need to bring down the exposure a little bit to compensate. I'm just going to erase around the edges here if I've gone too far in making my selection. Let's click Done and let's go back out again. So as I said, I thought that we probably wouldn't see any effect up here because by the time we've relit it, we're looking at this area being of more visual interest than this area up here. But you could also just crop the image. So we could go and do a slightly better crop here to try and knock out the top of that image just where we've got a little bit of excess daylight. So here is the image as it was out of the camera, a daylight scene in an alleyway in, I think it was Siena or Florence. And here it is relit to give us a, a day for night scene. It's a fun way of doing some work in Lightroom and learning to use the adjustment brush and learning to paint light onto your images. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for the video tutorial. Look out for more tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.